A decision of the federal court may have taken the legal ramifications of an employer's policies to a whole new level. The Commonwealth Bank was found to have breached its duty of trust and confidence to an employee whose position had been made redundant. So what duties are in a relationship between an employer and employee and what does this case bring up? We are joined by Joy Deep Hoare from People and Culture Strategies. What's implied in this duty, Joy Deep, that, uh, that was involved in this case? Yeah, it's important to understand the, the way an employment contract works from a legal point of view. Most people will have a contract of employment. That contract will set out things that are known as express terms. Those express terms are the mm -hmm. matters that will be dealt with in that contract, such as what the person is employed to do, what they're going to be paid when they start, all of those kinds of things. The law has recognised for many years that even if certain things aren't written into a contract, they're implied. So, for example, you don't have to write into a contract that the employee can't steal from the employer. That's mm -hmm. a f fairly fundamental part and parcel of being an employee. What this particular case is all about is an implied duty that's been debated for many years and has never really got off the ground here in Australia that employers owe their employees a responsibility or a duty of trust and confidence. In other words, the employer can't conduct itself in a way that undermines that, that fundamental trust that it needs to have with its employees. Now, you, you can appreciate, as most people would, that that's a fairly vague and, mm. and nebulous sort of concept with potentially far-reaching ramifications. So it's unsurprising that Australian courts have said for many years, hang on, we're a bit nervous about extending it to the point of being an implied term in every employment contract. Mm -hmm. But this case says, at least on the particular facts that were before the court in this particular case, that yes, that implied duty does exist. Well, that, I mean, that's interesting. So what specifically would that implied duty entail and how would making someone redundant breach that? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because what the, the Federal Court Judge Justice Pasanko said in this particular case that in circumstances where the employer, which in this case was the Commonwealth Bank, yes. had a, an extensive redundancy policy that had a number of uh, obligations in it that they chose to impose on themselves around how they would handle, broadly speaking, the redundancy and redeployment process of an employee whose position had been made redundant. When you fail to comply with certain parts of that, that conduct amounts to a breach of this implied duty. So interestingly, what he's saying is that uh, the mere fact that you're not complying with the, the policy doesn't mean that you're breaching the contract because he accepted that policies and contracts can be, can be separate. But where it goes to, to such a fundamental and important obligation, such as if your position's been made redundant, we will take all steps to redeploy you. And if you depart from that, then that's going to be a breach of that implied duty of trust and confidence. In other words, it's almost a, a finding, if you like, that the employer has acted in a sinister way. So this comes down to those stated company policies. If, if the company hasn't got any policies in terms of redeployment, this wouldn't be an issue? Well, that's right. I think there'd be a lot of employers uh, who are well, certainly conversations we're having with a lot of our clients at the moment. They're saying, well, maybe we just do away with all of our policies because mm -hmm. if the whole purpose of having them is to give employees comfort and, and certainty but if we're creating a rod for our own backs in so doing what's the point? Yes. Uh, I can understand why employers would think that. My advice to employers is think very carefully about the policies that you actually need to have in your, your organisation. I see far too many organisations coming unstuck because every time there's an issue or a new problem they, they resort to the creation of a policy and so some organisations have you know ten lever arch files full of workplace policies all of which are potentially potentially creating big, big risks for them along these particular lines. I think what this particular case says though is that it's fine to have policies that are described as aspirational, parenthood statements, you know, we want to be a great employer, we want to be the best place to work in the country, all of that. I don't think any court's going to be too troubled by that creating any binding obligations. It's all fairly um, wishy-washy. But where your employer policies are saying if certain things happen, we're going to do X, Y and Z, and then you choose not to do that, and particularly where it deals with termination of employment or something like performance management, uh, or, or alternatively investigating a serious allegation of misconduct, say of sexual harassment, then you can't just walk away from those policies. Even if in the contract, I mean, could you in the contract specifically outline that the broader company policies don't apply? Is well, that what you'd have to get to? Well, that's a good point because that's what a lot of employers have taken to doing in the last 
four or five years. They're saying we'll have these policies but they don't form a part of your contract. I think this case is going to force employers to rethink that kind of drafting because what this case says is that sure it might not be a term of the contract but if you depart from it in such a heinous way we'll find that you've breached the implied duty of trust and confidence so a court may still come back and get you. And in which case what's the point in having the policies if in everyone's contract you say they don't apply that sounds a little ridiculous. Exactly I do think there's a level of hypocrisy for an employer to say to an employee we expect you to comply with all of these things if you don't we might terminate your employment and on the other hand say but you know we can pick and choose when we want to comply with it so I think there's an ethical mm. issue for employers in this. What about if you flip it round in terms of uh, the onus on the employees in terms of company policy? Yeah. I mean, does that reverse? Well, employees will have an obligation to comply with those policies and employers regularly will take disciplinary action against employees who don't comply with those particular policies. Yeah. So employers don't have to worry too much about the implied duty issue where an employee doesn't comply. They can take disciplinary action subject to fair process and uh, you know, conducting investigations and whatever else. OK, so obviously this is a, an issue at the moment. I guess just before we finish more broadly, what are the major concerns that your clients are coming to you with in, from a business perspective in terms of contracts and policies and things like that? What, what are they worried about at the moment? Yeah, I think this, this case has certainly sent a few shockwaves through employers just because of the fact that policies have become quite commonplace within their, their organisations. I think a lot of employers are now facing the situation of, well, if we're going to do away with all these policies, what does that mean in terms of the message that we're sending to our staff. So there's a fine balancing act there. I think the other main concern for employers and a real watch out is when people's roles change or, or uh, they evolve through an organisation through promotion or pay rise or whatever, the failure to update contracts in those circumstances also bringing a lot of employers unstuck at the moment. Like always, a complicated situation for a lot of uh, employers to broach, which is I guess why, why they have you, Joydi. Thank you so much Thanks, for joining Kate. us. We really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. We're going to head over to Comsec now to check.